Ephesians chapter 3 at ituloy po natin ang ating uh, series sa book of Ephesians. At uh, tayo po ay nasa topic po rin po na mystery. Mystery revealed and under the heading of the mystery na take up na po natin ang uh, uh, several points under the mystery. Number one is that Paul was the prisoner of the mystery. He considered himself a prisoner of the mystery. Ang kanyang buhay was entirely dedicated to the declaration of the mystery. At then, ang importante, and especially sa mga preachers, kasi nga, when you say preach, you are to what? You are to declare. You are to proclaim. So as preachers, what are we to declare and what are we to proclaim? Of course, uh, mainly, mainly ang uh, declare ng mga preachers is the gospel. Pero the Bible also tells us to what? The whole, the whole counsel of God. So wala ho tayong uh, itikili ako sa ating uh, itikilihan at itikilihan. It's the whole counsel of God. Kahit yung area na sa natin, failure ng preacher, wala kang magagawa. Alam ka naman, iilag ka, di ba? Ay, huwag ka lang ito. Nasaktan ako rito. Sinatamaan ako rito. Weakness ko ito. Masyarap ito rito. Wala kang magagawa. Because the Bible says, teach the whole counsel of God. At isa po sa uh, dapat ini-declare ng mga preachers ay yung sinatang isang book of Ephesians na to declare the unsearchable Habas ko hindi ka searchable o wala hindi na. Minsan, ano ba yan? Searchable or maybe? Ayan na ba ng alam natin. Pero ba rito yung searchable? Kaya nyo ang visionary nyo. May ito ba? May unsearchable. Unsearchable. Ganyan ba yan? Ayan yung check. Ano ba yung visionary nyo? Tama, may E. Okay. Minsan may pagka... Walang E. Ay, friend nyo. Kaya, maganda po na masanay tayo sa kung ano tama. Ayan. Parang recharge po. Okay. So, isa po sa dapat ituro ng mga preachers is the Unsearchable riches of Christ. Alam niyo po mga kapatid, mahirap magpabuhay ng ating productive, obedient Christian living. Ano po na? Wala tayong idea sa mga riches ng Panginoon at yung riches na yan, sinira sa atin ng Panginoon din. Kasi so, yung motivation natin to be faithful, yung motivation to serve, buhay na kami, appreciation ng appreciation natin sa ginawa sa atin ng Panginoon. Kaya pag, pag hindi mo nare-realize yung ginawa sa'yo ng Panginoon, we take things for granted. Di ba? Parang bali wala na. Tama? Tama ko ba? <laughs> Kagaya ng mga magulang natin, di ba? Minsan, parang natin take for granted ng mga magulang, until we realize na maging magulang ka na rin, ma-realize mo, sabi mo parang maging magulang, no? Lahat yun nagawa ng nanay ko para sa akin. Lahat yun nagawa ng tatay ko para sa akin. Halos hindi na sila bumitili ng damit. Diba? Galing-galing matutulog. Maagang maagang higisay. Kaya yung prepare na lahat. Makapag-aral ako. May susuot ako. May may pangbaon. Merong pa, pangmatrikulan. Para maitaguhin ang pag-aaral ko. Tapos, ano, hindi man lang ang mag-uswelo. Pag pinakita natin ang grades natin, ano, yung pakapasalan. Ano? Until sa tayong magulang ka, ganito pa na kahirap. So, kailan mo na, kailan ka nagkakaroon ng, ng deep love sa, sa magulang mo? Kapag na-realize mo na yun, di ba? Kapag nakita mo, bilang bumukas ang isip mo, ganito pa na ginawa para sa akin. Ganito pa na isa-nakrepisyo para sa akin. Ganun din po yan, mga kapatid, sa spiritual realm. May mga kristyano na kadalang service, yung Panginoon, parang light na, parang Magkaang lang sa bahay. They don't take it seriously. Bak- bakit mga kapatid? Sa tingin niya, hindi pa nila masyado na-appreciate o na-realize yung ginawa ng Panginoon. 
Kasi kung ma-realize ko, pag stinkin sa utak natin, yung, yung, yung uh, grand, yung uh, pagiging grand na ginawa ng Panginoon, yung great na ginawa ng Panginoon, yung sacrifice, yung laki ng kanyang forgiveness, sabi nga ng group of Roman, ano, isa sa unsearchable riches of Christ, ang sinyek na sa atin ni Jesus at forbearance, His kindness, at marami sa kindness na yan, mga kapatid, undeserved, na maraming pagkakataon tayo, mga kapatid, we are undeserving of kindness. Yet, despite the fact that we are undeserving of God's kindness, He was kind to us, and what else? Kung kanyang forbearance, sa iyong forbearance, mahaba ang kanyang pasensya sa atin. Ngayon, yung mga unbelievers, nakikita nila yan as chance to, to abuse. Lalo ang gusto yun ng Panginoon. Sabi ni Paul, knowing that the, 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 the goodness of God leadeth to what? Leadeth ni to repentance. Yan ang dapat magtulak sa iyo, ma-realize na dapat nag-repentant ang attitude. Kung hindi yung inaabuso mo ang kabahit ng Panginoon. Dahil sa totoo lang, mga kapatid, napakabahit na Diyos sa atin. Sa kabila ng mga abuso na ginagawa natin sa kanya, hindi pa abuso yung kaso, pangalamin na tinutulungan natin ang Panginoon. Ang mga nangyayari din sa Diyos. Yung majesty ng Panginoon, yung kanyang kadakilaan, tinutulog-tulungan lang natin sa pangalangin. Pagka minsan, hindi ko rin masisi, no? Kung minsan talaga tinatalo tayo ng kuya, bago, galing ka sa night shift, makakatulog tayo, no? Ito yung maganda na tinutulugan natin sa gata ng pangin. Ano? Pero hindi mo daw ako quick to condemn lahat na nakakatulog dahil hindi mo talaga nakakatulog dahil sa lata niya ko. Kahit alam nila ang pagkakas sila, galing sa night shift, pinilis pa rin sila mga pagkakas. Ito ako condemn mo natin. Pero mga kapatid, Getting into the bottom of it, hindi talaga tama na salita ng pangon na we should what? We should give our full attention. Ama? Bigay natin ang ating full attention. Pero hindi nga po yung nangyayari. Pero sa maraming pagkakataon, naaabuso ang Panginoon. Naaabuso ang kanyang kabahitan. Naaabuso ang kanyang patience. Pero pag na-realize natin kung ano ang Panginoon, ano ang ginawa niya sa atin? Medyo mag-iisip tayo kung gawin mo natin ang Magkikilos na ako ng pensyon. Ganito ba dapat ang behavior ko? Kanta ko sa service of God? Attitude ko sa God? So as preachers, we are to declare that only the gospel. We are to declare mainly the gospel. But the Bible tells us to preach the whole counsel of God. At isa sa hindi dapat nakawala sa dinideclare ng mga preachers ay ang kayamanan ng Diyos, ang kayamanan ng Panginoon na isinier sa mga Kristiyanan. Because when we get into a into, into grasp, pag nag-grasp po natin yan, mga kapatid, ano? Ganito pala ang ginawa ng Diyos para sa atin. Yan ang pagbubog sa iyo, pagbubotivate sa iyo para ano? Magkaroon ng proper reaction. Pero hanggang hindi mo na re-realize na, mga kapatid, wala ang service mo sa Panginoon, para na lang superficial, mababaw. Pag naitiman ko, wait po, pag hindi yung pagkawala sa mood, wala mo na. Nasabot ka, o sige. Simba mo na ako, o ganito mo na, gawa nyo. Pag wala ka sa mga, unstable. Hindi talaga properly motivated. A superficial kind of uh, service. So again, let's read ano, Ephesians chapter 3. This is about the mystery. So far, ang mga nag-take up na po natin about the mystery revealed this number one, that Paul was a prisoner. As I said, his life, his entire life was dedicated into the, de the declaration of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He declared the Lord. He declared the gospel. He declared Christ, the unsearchable riches of Christ. At ang kanya, ang summary ng kanyang buhay is what? Repentance toward God and faith toward, toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Another thing that we have already taken up is the plan. The plan of the mystery. And uh, right now, we are dealing on the preaching. The preaching of the mystery. So, yun ako pinag-uusapan natin, ano? the preaching of the mystery. For this cause, I call the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you, Gentiles, since you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you are. To you are na mga Gentiles, because the apostle Paul was the apostle of the Gentiles. 
Verse 3, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore unto you, uh, afore in few words. So Paul was made an administrator of the mystery, and he received that by revelation. So, it established to Paul, according to his authority, in his message, that it was he revealed revelation. Verse 4, whereby when he read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of God. Ano po ba itong mystery na ito? Actually, marami pong mystery. Ano? But the particular mystery, a mystery is referring to here, is the mystery of the Jew and Gentile coming together. Pero marami pang other mystery. In fact, the Lord Jesus Christ himself is a mystery. Diba? And it was also Apostle Paul who declared one mystery in 1 Corinthians 15. Sabi niya, no, I'll show you a mystery. And what's that mystery? We will not all sleep. We will not all sleep. But we will all be one. We will all be changed. Lahat na nasa Panginoon, magkakaroon ng glorified body, kahit na hindi lahat ay mga matay. The term sleep is euphemism for death. We will not all die. And Apostle Paul was referring to the rapture. Sabi niya, Behold, I'll show you a mystery. We will not all sleep or die. Because when the Lord comes, hindi tayo mga matay at gagawin tayo sa langit ng hindi mga Pero kakaroon ng Lord by We shall all be changed. So, maraming mystery, you know, that was entrusted to Apostle Paul. Verse 5, and this mystery, sabi niya, which in other ages, particularly in the Old Testament, wala kahit sa alinman mga ibang prophets, ano, ang nakaalam itong mystery na ito. That the Jew and the Gentile will all be together. Ano? Although meron pong paisa-isang glimpse na nagabanggit sa Old Testament, and yet, meron blindness in the eyes of the Gentile, of the, of the Jews, even among the Lord's prophets. Ano ba yung mga glimpses na yan? Actually, meron po mga kahiwati at pakitan eh. Can you like, can you like one? It was uh, Gen Genesis chapter, uh, was it 12 or, yeah, it's Genesis chapter 12. Ang sabi ng Panginoon kay Abraham, in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Diba, pag sinabi all the families of the earth, that includes the Gentiles. Hindi lang you, diba? All the families of the earth be blessed. Another thing, another glimpse of that is in the book of Isaiah. I set thee a light to the Gentiles. I set thee as a light to the Gentiles. In the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, about the speaking in tongues, I will pour my spirit. And the people who did not call me God will call me their God. Eh, ang mga Jew lang naman ang tumatawag sa tunay na Diyos. And the rest of the world, they have different gods. Either they were pantheists or they were polytheists. Pero yung mga hindi tumatawag sa tunay na Diyos, magsisimulang tatawag sa Diyos ng mga Israelites. Ano yan? That refers to God. Then time. Pero mga kapatid, masyadong blinded, you know? So, palagay niya, bakit ang Diyos nag-alat ng court for the Gentiles? Kaya sa temple, di ba? Uh, uh, Narealize niya. Di ba sa temple, meron court for the Gentiles? Ano yan? Area para sa mga Gentiles. Dahil yung portion na yun, yung part na yun sa temple, pag nandun ang mga Gentiles, that would be the opportunity of the Jewish people to proselyte or to preach to them. So that's the great mystery, you know? At alam niyo ba kung sino yung uh, mystery na yun? Sinasabi ni Paul tayo yun eh. Mga Gentile tayo. Diba? Tayo yun. Tayo yun. Yung nasa mystery ng Panginoon. Tayo na mga walang Diyos. Diba tawag sa atin ni Paul? We are aliens. We are not under the commonwealth of Israel. Ano pa? We have no God. We have no hope. We have no Christ. Hindi pala tayo sa Diyos. Walang kahit knowledge about salvation. Karoon na nangyari mga kapatid. Nagkaroon ng turn. Nagkaroon ng 
change of position. So now in a blind, so now in a partial blindness. The Jewish people are the now they're still blind. Kailan sila magbubuka ng mata? Pag dating ng Panginoon after seven years tribulation. Anong talo dun sa event after seven years? Come on. Pagbalik ng Panginoon after seven years, anong talo dun? Hindi, after seven years nga eh. Revelation. Kasi, the event before seven years is called the rapture. Tama? Event before tribulation is the rapture. And the next event after the seven years tribulation is the return of Christ which is called the revelation. Doon palang mabubuksan ang mata sa mga Israelites. Romans 11, 26. And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion a deliverer and shall turn away and threaten the congregation. And they will cry on him and they will see him whom they have pierced. They will cry. Para i-realize nila na yung palang ipinago sa kanilang mga magulang, yung kanilang sinasabing impostor, yung pala tunay na Messiah, andiyan ko na lang ngayon, ngayon, ngayon para i-save sila against the beast, against the United Nations. Because at the end of seven years tribulation, ano, bago mag-consonate mag yan, magkakaroon na kanil, yung climax na ano, yung climax na tribulation, ang tawag na. What do you call the climax of the tribulation period? Ano nga ang matawag doon? Battle of... Battle of Armageddon. Para tayong... Ano ba? Ano nang nangyayari sa atin? Ang Israel at that time, mga kapatid, eh, ano na, may engulf. Kung baga sa dragon, kung baga sa dragon, malapit sa silang lamunin sa dragon. And right at the nick of time, ano, gadating ang Panginoon, will open Mount Sinai. No, 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 not Mount Sinai. The Lord, will, the, the Lord will enclave them in Mount Olives. Zechariah chapter 12 or chapter 14. Bubukas ang Mount Olives. Pagkakaroon ng pagbubukayan uh, in four directions. Bubukayan. At i-enclave ng Panginoon ng Israel. Doon sa loob. Pagkakaroon ng malaking valley. Valley doon sa loob ng Yudlo. At doon sa Lebanon. Kaya yung dumating at na Panginoon na all their life, for two millennium, sinasabi nila, impostor, impostor, ay darating to their rescue. Dahil pag hindi darating ang Panginoon, mawawain out of that because the beast, together with the United Nations, papaligiran na nila ng atin eh. Papaligiran na nila ng at Kristo, o tama ang United Nations. Yun yung event na yung Freitas River matutuyo, di ba? Maiigahan ng tubig. At ang aagos, dugo na aagot sa hanggang sa bibig ng kabayo. Ganon karami ang fatalities. Ganon karami ang, ano, ang mga matay. At ang lalaban, Panginoon, tayo, cheerers lang. Panonood lang tayo. Panginoon, nagkagawa niya. So, sana po, ano pa, tandaan natin, ano, yung sequence. Yung mga sequence of all the things. Malaman natin kung nasaan tayo sa mga panahon na yan. Sa panahon na yan, ano ginagawa ng Kristiyano? Nasa likod lang tayo. Sige po, Panginoon. Sige, sige. Sige, Panginoon. Ayun pa, ayun pa. Ayun, nagtatago doon. Ayun, wala tayo, cheaters. Because when the Lord comes back, He will not be the Lamb. But He will come as the Lion of Judah. He will come, not riding on the donkey. He will, riding, he will be riding a white horse. So, ito yung panahon na mapagpahinuhol pa ang Panginoon. This is the time of the Lord's patience, the time of the Lord's forbearance. Panahon para magsisi ang tao. So, kaya pagbalik ng Panginoon, eh, tapos ka, no? Tapos ka kami na eh. Tapos na yung uh, preaching na kami, 144,000, di ba? Because that's already the end of the Revelation time. Wala na preaching. Tapos na yan. Eh. Ang pangangaral naman ng uh, 144,000 at the middle of the seven years. At the middle of the seven years. Okay. Uh, verse 6. That the Gentiles should be fair heirs, including us. 
that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ, by the gospel whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of grace. So I was made a minister, I was made a preacher. According to the gift of the grace of God given unto me. By the effectual working of his power unto me, who am less than the least of all things. Less of the least of that. But the least, di ba na yan? Kumaga highest, kumaga sa degree of comparison, wala na kami. Wala na susunod sa list eh. Pero sabi ni Paul, kung gano'n yung list, ako pa yung magbababa kaysa. Kaysa sa list. Pero ang pinimang ko, that is not for humility. Yan po yung honest assessment ni Paul sa kanyang sarili. Not only of the fact that he was, that he persecuted, the Church of the Lord. But because of the fact, mga kapatid, na gano'n niya na gano'n niya na nag-run for the other parang choose to land sa banal ng parang. Because the more you realize God's holiness, mas lalo tayo naging sensitive sa sa ano natin, sa sinfulness natin. Lalo tayo naging sensitive sa kapalanan sa buwan natin. Sino po yung parang tingin niya sa sarili niya eh Walang problema ha. Yung mga ganun mga kapatid, hindi nila masyado na grasp kung saan ang kapanal ng pangyay. But the more you realize how holy God is, ano, dami siya kapatid, lalo ba magiging sensitive sa unrighteousness of a religion ko. Lalo kung na-realize yung sin, mga kasalanan sa iyong buhay, lalo kang nagiging sensitive. Okay. Verse 8, unto me, who am less than the least of all things? Is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ? That I should preach among <coughs> the Gentiles. So all was a preacher. It is the preaching of the mystery. As I can say, you know, you also declare the riches. Marami tayo to declare. We need to declare the gospel. And we need to declare the whole counsel of God. We need to declare the unsearchable riches of Christ. Kasi nga mga kapatid, ano, ang hirap, napakahirap sa Kristiyano yung yung uh, masustain yung faithfulness. Kaya rin kaya din ang ligo yun. Yung faithfulness is sustain. Ang hirap. ginagawa dyan minsan ay ma-church. Oh, isip ka na activity, activity para hindi naman ako sa tibahang mga membro. Kailangan para sa time time activity. So, every time we fuel by activity, pinu-fuel ang kanilang attendance, excitement through activities. Ano pagka nawala ng activity? Enthusiasm dahil lang. And back to yung yun natin yung schedule revival. Well, it's not like a church. Siguro mag-revival tayo. Schedule natin sa February, revival tayo. Pag in-schedule nyo ba revival, pangyayari yung revival. Hindi mo in-schedule ng revival na tumatang yung puli. And Christian, realize, you know, realize their sinfulness and their touch our hearts of the fact of their sinfulness of their shortcomings. Those of them are not. Wala naman ang revival na wala ang repentance eh. Lahat ang revival, mga kapatid, even personal or church or national revival, lahat siya nagsisimula ang repentance. For as long as tao, merong unrepentant heart, hindi yung makikita ang repentance. Nagsisimula ang revival sa repentance. Maaani ng tao sa kanyang pagkakamay. Maaani ng tao sa kanyang Uh, hum, humble, but he is humiliated. He, he, he is obeyed before God. And I realized that in the number of the Lord, he will repent that. Verse 9, And to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery 
which from the beginning of the world have been deemed in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now, unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. So in verse 10, the Amaya po, 11, the expound that, you know. But uh, in verses 1 to uh, 9, we have seen here the mystery. The mystery being revealed. We have seen here the plan of the mystery. We have seen Paul as a prisoner of the mystery. <coughs> and we have seen the importance of preaching the mystery. Of preaching the whole counsel of God. Of preaching the gospel. Of preaching the searchable riches of God. Kasi po, pag nakita natin kung gaano ang payaman ng Panginoon, kung gaano niya pinayaman ang mga Christian, isa yan sa mga pag-motivate sa ating faithfulness, sa ating Lord. Yan ito pala po ginawa niyo. From rocks to riches, from nothing to something. Alam niyo, magandang practice gawin natin ang mga ikatan niyo. You go into a personal study of the Bible. Ano ba kaya isamin niyo sa study yun? Ano ba mga ginawa ng Panginoon sa Panginoon? Isa, di ba, magawa niya, kanyari, S, S sign of a Christian. Kasi hindi lang naman puro S eh. Pero ito nga, ito nga ginawa ng Diyos sa mga Christian ang mga Christian sa S. Yung mga Christian na ganyan. Kaya ginagawa ko niya for easy being motivation for the limang naman. Kanyari, S signs. The Lord made us what? Saints. Serpents. Slaves. Katotohanan yan eh. Katotohanan yan mga kapatid. 
ginawa tayo ng ambassador, ginawa tayo ng servant, ginawa tayo ng A ng mga joint ALP class. So, <clears throat> again, regarding the preaching of the gospel, no? ang mga preachers are in constant danger, no? Let me repeat. Preachers are in constant danger. Danger of what? Danger of losing their effectiveness. Preachers are in constant danger of losing their power, their effectiveness, the power of their word, their influence. Kailan na nangyayari mga kami? When a preacher starts to run, he starts to think higher than he ought to think about himself. Kasi when you, you, when you start to think higher than you ought to think about yourself, meaning you, you start to become proud. Medyo tumitin din na ang tingin mo sa importansya mo. You feel yourself to be very important. Hindi tatakbo, hindi agar ang lahat, wala ka. You are an indispen uh, indispensable. Actually, that's the moment that you lose your power. Because that's also the moment that you lose your life. You lose your dependence. Kaya sa sekola, mga kapatid, lahat ng ating power, ano, ng ating lakas, yung uh, strength ng ating ministry, lahat yan, granted ng Panginoon. Sa biyaya lang ng Panginoon. But when you start to compete with God, and you think otherwise, you do all things according to your power, according to your skill. Sabi ng Diyos, ito ang paraan. Hindi, parang ano yan eh, mabagal yung paraan na yan eh. Parang hindi na yung nauso ngayon eh, mukhang ito ang paraan na yan eh. Di diba yan na nga yung path na tinig ko parang yung church niya? To the point of removing the title, the name Baptist. For the sake of what? For the sake of church for sale. Di ba market na natin ba? Instead of proclaiming the gospel, proclaiming Christ, ano ginagawa nila? May namarket ang church, ito ay mag-church, at kung hindi yun ka rin. Hindi kami masakit mag-preach, ang gospel namin, ano, uh, watered down, sugar-coated, hindi confrontational, hindi offensive kami mag-preach, hindi kami manegatin. Ang preaching sa amin, hindi nakakasakit ng banda amin. Yeah, yeah. Wala pa ka mga kapatid. Ayan, yung malayo yan sa Spanish Bible. Alam niyo ba, ang preaching ng Panginoon, walang itinangako na yaman sa mundong ito. In fact, yung sinasabi nilang verse na John 10, na pag naging kristyano ka, kasama dyan yung abundant life, pwede niya yaman ka. Actually, mga kapatid, it's only a million about being rich. The fact that you are saved, that is already an abundant life. Amen. Yung wala ng condemnation sa'yo, Romans 8.1, there is therefore now no condemnation for them that are in Christ Jesus. Isn't that an abundant life already? Nabubuhay ba na free of guilt? Alam niyo ba napakamaraming mayaman na guilty ang kanilang conscience? Weighted ang kanilang balikat ng bigat ng kanilang kasalanan? Namumuhay sila araw-araw pagod kaya sa mga Christ. Come and pay all you that labor. Hindi naman physical, physical labor at tinuturo yun eh. Mental, spiritual, emotional. Maraming tao mayamang mahirap yun. Samantala ang Kristiyano, wala na yung burden of guilt sa balikat mo dahil nilift na ng Panginoon. Burdens are lifted at Calvary. Hindi ba abandon ka siya? You are living in the fact that you are already forgiven. Napatawad ka na sa iyong mga kasalanan. Diba? So hindi ba abundant life yan? Yung mga abundant life about having one million in your bank account. Hindi yun yung abundant life mga kapatid. Nakakamad eh. Maraming tao thinking about abundant life as being rich. Abundant life is having salvation. Yung proses mo, ang kaligtasan, wala na yung condemnation niya. That is a man. 
Ito malayong malayo no sa malayong malayo sa estilo ngayon. Malayong malayo sila sa Bible. Ngayon, ano naman yung ano, gusto ngayon? Church. Pag uh, may na-market na church. Ito ay sa amin. Ayan ako. Ang time nyo, very distorted. Full air condition. Hindi kami masakit ng church. Alam nyo ba printing ng Panginoon? It's a kind of preaching that calls for what? Calls for a lot of sacrifice. Ano sa akin ng Panginoon sa Bible? If any would be my disciple, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and come. I don't deny yourself. It means to refuse yourself. You have to constantly refuse yourself. Stop associating with yourself. It means death your dreams. It means death your own desires. Death your own aspirations. And it could mean separation from loved ones. He that hates that not his mother or father is worthy to be my disciple. But don't take it wrong. God does not teach hatred of family. God is teaching priority. When it gets to the point na manginini ka between family or God, our priority should always be God. And being a disciple might come to that point. It might come to the point of even separating from your wife or husband. 1 Corinthians chapter 7. If he wishes to live, let him go. God did not call us to confusion, but he called us to peace. If that is what it takes, para makakulpin mo, discipleship mo. Maturuan mo mga anak mo ng tama, kaysa na ko confused. Tinuturo mo kuya, kasama mo, inom ng inom ng alak, natutugal. Kaya ngayon, nagsasabi na gusto ng lumaya, sabi ng Bible, let him go. That is what means to become a disciple of the Lord. It will take a lot of sacrifice, self-denial. Pero ano po ang preaching ngayon? Diba? Bayanan ka. Gaganda ang buhay mo. Aayos ang mga relasyon mo. Nasa iyo lang ang Panginoon, aayos ang mga relasyon mo. Sabi ng Panginoon, I did not come to bring peace. I came to bring source. I came to bring source. Quarrel, trouble in the family. Not necessarily that the, the Lord really creates trouble. But because of your stand for the Lord. Because of your stand, conviction for the Lord. Necessarily, you know, hindi mo tanggap with that. You'll oppose you. So our, our, our gospel is not a, it should not be a water down gospel. It should not be a sugar coated gospel. It is a gospel that calls for a lot of sacrifice. Sabi ng Tainan, taxes and hold, uh, taxes and hold, and birds and nests. Hindi naman tayo niligtas ang Panginoon para niligtas tayo sa poverty. But God does not demand poverty. Hindi naman nakakulod na kailangan mahirap ka para maging sacrifice. Walang ganang prison. In fact, if you are a faithful steward of the Lord, baka maalit ang boy mo. Pero hindi yun ang dahilan kung bakit ka niligtas ang Panginoon. It is not to rescue you from poverty or from a miserable life. The Lord rescued us from hell. Kaya tayo siya rin ng Panginoon para hindi mapunta sa Diyos. Okay? So, pastors, as I said, or preachers of the, of, of the gospel, preachers of the Lord, are always in constant danger of losing their effectiveness, kailan niya, at the moment that that preacher start to think of himself as very important or behaves himself as if he does not need the Lord. Parang hindi niya kailangan ng Panginoon. Actually, that's the start of the time. Ang ating effectiveness, lahat ng kapatid, ay nakasalangay sa ating dependence sa Panginoon. When he exalts himself, begins to work in his own power, according to his schemes and plans, to start to compete with God. Ano na yan? Hindi na yan power of the Holy Spirit. That's human power of the Holy Spirit. Maraming gawain na rin yan, mga kapatid. 
Ma adapt and prosper. But indeed, because of the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of the energy of the Holy Spirit. Yan nabita ng mga psychology, marketing strategy. Doon mo sa ngayon, cell group, cell group. Hindi mo siya doon yung ano yung cell group. Narinig ko lang ka. Gusto mo sa ngayon, cell group. Ano yung cell group? Pwede ka na dito silba, masang yung cell group, yung bayan. Small church, small churches within the church, okay? You have a small church? You have a kind of church within the church? <laughs> Hello, what's the way? Ano ba bang strategy ngayon? Parang ano? Uh, networking? G12? Diba? Meron pa lang na G12? Narek ko lang yun, G12. Ano yung marketing strategy? Kung paano, in a, in a short period or span of time, lalago ang gawain ng Panginoon up to this number, up to this quantity. Ano yung marketing strategy? Meron po bang shortcut sa gawain ng Panginoon? Di ba ano po ang, uh, ano po ang nag-iisang paraan sa gawain ng Panginoon? It pleased God through the foolishness of three things. To save them God. Alam niyo, meron po isang ministry sa US na especially sa especially sa children. There is a type of ministry in a certain church na they make Christianity so so acceptable. So hard to refuse. To the point na uh, napaka-attractive ng Christianity, napaka-attractive ng church doon to the point na uh, hindi mo alam kung bakit nandun ang tao. Hindi mo na alam kung Panginoon ba nagdala or it's just because the church became so very attractive. And supposed to be, ang nagdodraw sa atin ito Panginoon ay ang ibang hindi. Ang nagdodraw sa atin, maraming gawa, eh, dahil kung may kaayong namin pa. But if we are in the church because of so many things that are attractive in the church, entertainment, nakikater tayo, pero tanong, ano ba yung message that saves? What is the thing that saves? Ano yung dala ng simbahan na nagsasave? Is it the charisma? Is it the charm? Ay, doon ako kasi pogi yung pastor. Doon ako kasi dynamic. Doon ako kasi, ano, maayos magsalita, hindi ba rin ba ako? Doon ako, ano yun, ano yun, pino yun, refined. Meron bang charm? Meron bang idadagdag yung charm natin sa kaliligtas ng tao? Kahit paano mo i-modify, ano? Walang maidadagdag yan sa gospel. Ang pagliligtas sa tao sa gospel of the Lord, walang maidadagdag yan ang pangalaman ng mga ingredients na lalagin yan. Sa mga kapatid, ang effectiveness ng isang preacher, effectiveness ng isang gawal, ay nakasalari yan sa ating dependence sa kanya. But when you start is to modify start being creative, nalalayo ka sa pamamaraan ng Diyos. Sabi ng Bible, it pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to say that the Diyos. Diyos sa mga gawain ngayon, almost in preaching, wala. Plenty of songs, plenty of testimonies, plenty of special numbers, pero di ko rin nagbabago ang Diyos. It pleased God through the foolishness of preaching to say that the Diyos. And among the greatest dangers, you know, the greatest dangers to the ministry. Again, dangers to the ministry and dangers to faithful Christian living. Dangers sa Christian naman po kasi. Alam niyo po ang danger sa buhay pa na palataya natin? At danger sa mga sa mga ministry na natin. Are the things that are attractive to this world. Yung mga bagay-bagay na hinahabol-habol ng mundo. Ano po yan mga kapatid? Ano 
Tukang mana teman tu? Prestige. Per personal ambition. Well, you know how many teman tu itu? Honor. Reputation. Yan naman may value eh. Ang dami. Kaya nyo kung paano laitin ang gawain ng Panginoon. Ewan ka mag pastor. Sa kanino ka pa naman. Saya, kung pastor ka lang. Sa akin, anong tingin nyo sa gawain ng pakailangan? Mahina ulo ng mga gawain. Alam nyo po ba na mahirap at ang pina ulo sa gawain ng Because you will handle the word of God. Hindi ka pwedeng careless sa paghandle ng salita ng Panginoon. Hindi pwedeng, hindi ka discerning sa word of God. And it takes a lot of time and labor for study to come up with proper interpretation of the word. Kailangan mahina. Pakalino ka, ako dapat doktor ka eh. Ito na lang, kapatid mo, mahinawal ko, yan pwede yan. Pwede yan, pastor. Ano lang naman yun eh, pep talk, situation lang to, okay ko. Hindi ko yun. Ganun, ganun lang po nila naisip, ano, ang gawain ng Panginoon. Anong tingin sa mga para ng Panginoon, di ba? Sabi ng Bible, tingin sa atin ay yagit, according to 1 Corinthians chapter 1, things that are not, that God used The weak things, God used the things that are considered as not to confound things that are mighty. To confound the wise. Kaya ang sabi ng mga parisis, nakakuha ng alis sa mga tao ng prostitution. These were fishermen, these were Galileans, illiterates. Where did they get their boldness? Sabi nila, if you will imprison me for preaching, I will never stop preaching. I will make, I will do a prison ministry. But you cannot stop me from preaching. Because you ought to obey God. Rather than me. Ako ang boldness. Tatlo ko ng courage. Tapang ko mga tayo. So ito po mga inahanan ng mundo ngayon. Wealth, prestige, personal ambition, auto, reputation, reputation, Eh, pag yan ang inambisyon ng gawain, inambisyon ng ministry, wala ang pari of my time pa rin. Kala niyo ba na may mga, may mga pastor na yun na ayaw na magpatawag ng pastor, gusto ba bisya? Although analytically, there's no difference, right? Because in the Bible, when you say bisya, he's also an elder and he's also a pastor. But in, in, in modern days usage, when you say bisya, ang dating, parang mataas. Kaya yung mga pastor, kaya ayaw na ng pastor, gusto ba bisya? Bakit? Rank of traditions. Rank of traditions. Alam niyo po, mga kapatid, the key, the key to our effectiveness is what? To realize that you are dependent on God. The realization that without God, you can do alam niyo ba kung bakit naging effective si Apostle Paul? Dahil kahit siya Apostle na, ang dami yung revelation na nat na dirigin sa kanya, anong tingin niyo sa kanya sa sarili? I am the least. I am the least. I am less. I am less than the least. Least na ka, mas mabaga ka sa sa least. Least is already the, the, the lowest degree of the part of the, the less. This, uh, less, lesser, least. Sabi ni Paul, I'm less than the least. Because once you come into grief and grasp of your dependence of God, uh, you need to go to the Lord without him, you can do nothing. Actually, that is your power. That's the Bible. My strength is perfected in it. My strength is perfected in weakness. Pero for as long as tingin mo sa sarili mo, it is just alright. 
Pero ako sa ilin talino, pero sa ilin steam, sa ilin akong plan. Plano ko na yan. Nakaapo ko na yan. Alam ko na yung haling ko. In the studio time. Ayos na yan. Ito na kailangan ng pangyari. Pero pag na-realize po natin na entirely, kahit yung nasa mercy lang ng Panginoon, even our activities, still tayo mas nagiging mas effective. Another thing that might disqualify a pastor is unholiness. When you start to think proud and unholy. So in the Apostle Paul, when I preach, I also uh, punish myself, lest after preaching to others, as hindi ko ginagawa yung pinipreach ko, I might be last day. So I pray ito ngayon, I pray ito. Salamat po ama sa mga pag-alala ng salita. Salamat po ama sa pagkakataon na ngayon sa pagkakulayan. Simulay po ama sa pagkakulayan ng pag-ahayal naman ng mga katotohanan at mabasa namin ang ating mga sarili, masalabi na ng mga sarili 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 ng mga Lagi po ama, ang naging dami ng aming gawain sa iba sa tuloy na mataas sa aming palagitan. Lagi po ang naging langit sa nga naman ng Panginoon Jesus. Amen. Amen.